Hey, so today I thought I'd share with you how I'm going to be saving lots of space on the allotment by growing vertically. I'm going to be growing some of my squash plants and also the Kobe scandens, that's the cup and saucer flowering vine, vertically up these arches that I've made from a very inexpensive arch from Wilco's here in the UK, but I'm pretty sure you can get them quite inexpensively um, you know, around the world. But I have reinforced it with extra mesh so that the plants have lots of um, support to hold on to. And we're gonna reinforce it as well to give it extra strength so it's not gonna blow around in the wind and fall over. So yeah, we're gonna do a little bit of DIY today and I'll also plant out a few of the crops down here as well. This is the garden arch that I'll be building for climbing plants and roses, 2.4 meters and they're really really easy to build guys i've already done two and even if you're not very good at diy if you usually get somebody to ask you to do it for you you can do this so for this entire project all you're really going to need is a little screwdriver i use this rather fancy looking one it just means that you don't have to move your wrist quite so much when you turn it but just a little crosshair screwdriver we're also going to need some scissors some small UV resistant zip ties and this mesh which is what we're going to cover over the archway for our plants to cling on to. This one actually measures 50 millimeter square mesh and it is made from plastic but it's going to last me for many years. And once you've built one of these you can really easily do the others quite quickly um, but to start with I like to separate all of the pieces into their different um, shapes so here I think you have three you've got like the arch shapes then you've got the long straight pieces and you've also got the horizontal bars as well and then the two legs are actually also different so I like to set them all out first so I know what I'm working with and then it's just a case of slotting them together and then the horizontal bar goes across and then you put the screw through all three essentially and then tighten it and it probably takes me about 15 20 minutes to do the whole thing um, you do need quite a bit of floor space that's the only thing i would say and at times you could do with an extra person to help you move the arch as you will later find out <laughs> but once you get into the swing of it it's really easy to put together the metal definitely isn't very strong though and i have heard people say that they can fall apart quite easy um, so yeah just bear that in mind if you do want to buy one they are quite flimsy and you've got to be careful with them i'm just hoping that with the extra strength and support that i'm going to give them then they might last at least one or two seasons i would hope now that's the last piece done and the most difficult part of this project is probably connecting the two halves because you need quite a bit of floor space but before we move this into position I just want to make sure that each of these are nice and tight and secure. Let's go. Ooh. Mind the alliums. Mind the alliums. And then you can just push them into the ground and depending on how light or heavy your soil is you may want to wet the soil prior to doing this because again this metal isn't very strong and you don't want to put too much weight on it how's that look and here they are three arches in a row and they're going to look quite amazing once they've got everything growing over them can't quite see them for all the green but let's make them extra secure now now to make sure these are extra secure against the wind i'm going to use some of these very small tree stakes just to root it down into the ground even better i'll use one on each side and i'm just going to thump it into the ground and secure it to that front support there Now then, that's made it much more secure and I'm quite happy this isn't going to go anywhere in the wind. 
Now it's time to add some mesh to our frame. This part was also rather annoying on my own. <laughs> As you can see, we're struggling. But I tried to find the halfway point of the mesh, uh, put that in the middle and then trail the sides either way down so that it was even. And then I used the zip ties again to attach the mesh to the frame. There is a bit of overhang that you can see coming off to the side, but that's easy to trim off uh, later on. So I just worked my way down, attaching zip ties to both sides and some of the horizontal bars as well. Then once it's all nice and tightly clipped into place, it's just a case of trimming off the excess from your zip ties and also from the mesh that you may have running along the edge as well. The arches are all done and covered and anchored to the ground and I'm really pleased with how it's looking so far. And now I've got to get a few plants in and I'm going to start with the Kobe Scandons. I've got four plants all together, two of them are going somewhere else up on my dead plum tree, but I'm going to put one on either side of this front archway. And these have currently been in my polytunnel for the last couple of weeks, prior to that they're at home. They've not yet really been hardened off, so I probably will cover them in fleece once I'm done at the end of today. And um, yeah, these are going to romp away and hopefully all the bells and the flowers will poke through those holes and hang down and might make a nice little photo op for me here. We'll see. <laughs> now Kobe Scandons are uh, an incredibly strong climber, an annual, unless you're somewhere quite sheltered in the middle of London, you might get it to survive over the winter. but they grow at least sort of 10 feet in the year. But to do that, they probably are gonna want a lot of nutrients. So I'm digging a little bit of a hole and I'm gonna put a lot of um, organic matter down in here to get them off to a great start and to feed them throughout the season. If I had space on the outside of the frame, that's probably where I'd plant them, but I'm sure they're just gonna romp away regardless of which side I plant them. But now I've just got to untangle this mess which I've been dreading ever since they started to climb. <laughs> These tendrils just really do cling onto anything. And they're starting to climb up the walls of my flat. Oh, hooray. One, two. Oh, that wasn't too bad. Three, four. All right. So I'm gonna go get some compost for my planting hole. You could probably use something like uh, manure, well-rotted manure. I've also got a little bit of leaf mould I might put in just to improve the organic matter in my soil. Always feeding my soil to get good plants and good growth. Now for the Kobe. So this is Kobe Scandens Alba. So it's a white flowering one, but it does also come in purple as well. You can see where I've had these sticks for it to climb whilst it's been growing. But now I want to get it in the ground and take away that stick. Just been trying to be very, very careful now. I'm gonna dig a nice big hole. Then we will tie in the tendrils that I'm actually able to bring out to the outside of the frame and then back over again. There we go. But we're well out of the dark now in terms of our last frost date because these are very sensitive to the cold. So you do not want to be planting them before your last frost date. And definitely once the soil is warmed and your outside day temperatures are on the rise, well, the Kobe Scandons are in, I've watered them and I've just given them a bit of fleece because it's quite windy at the moment. And as I say, I haven't actually hardened them off very well. So they're not quite acclimatized to the wind and the bright sunshine. So that will just help settle them in. And I'll leave that up for a few days and then take it off by the end of the week. And um, hopefully they should be absolutely fine. But yes, I'll come back in about a week or so when I'm gonna be planting out the rest of the squash in this patch. Before I planted the squash, I had to harvest all the remaining alliums that I had growing here so I could take them home and dry them. So first of all, I cut those away 
and they nicely fit into the strawberry cage for a little while whilst I was sorting out the rest of the squash patch. And it got incredibly hot this day, so I was not wearing appropriate clothing for the temperature it ended up being, but I just had to get through this. <laughs> so I planted the squash, uh, one on each side, incorporated lots of organic matter because squash are hungry plants and we want them to thrive and cover the entire archway by the end of summer. And then I cover them back up and it's important to give them a really good drink. You know, squash really are quite thirsty and hungry plants. So there we have it, all three arches are up. I ended up staking each of them on both sides to make sure that they are extra secure because these do have a reputation for breaking and for being pretty flimsy, but I just want to give it a try and see how I get on this season. So this will be a nice little test, see how they get on. So on this front one, we've got the Kobe Scandens, the cup and saucer vine that's going to flower all the way up here. Then we've got some squash, the Jack B. Little against this one. And then at the back, we've got Baby Boo, which is a white squash. And then along the ground, we've got the red curry or a cheeky curry squash, um, fairly close together, about a meter apart. But this is just gonna be absolutely covered in foliage within the next month or so. So watch this space and I'll give you regular updates on how the arches and my squash growing is going. Do let me know what you think to this project. Maybe you've used these before and they broke after a while. <laughs> we will see, but thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.